Humanity. When a Scatenii expedition fleet first found them, there was reason for much celebration among the great empires of the galaxy. The Scatenii were just explorers and data miners, more interested in simply cataloging the universe than actually bothering with the humans. After exchanging information, they simply left, broadcasted the location of a human colony world, then just buggered off. With the location of a new potential conquest, war fleets from the entire galaxy began the slow march to conquer the newcomers. It was then that the first signs we had bitten off more than we could chew. The first and last battle of Eden IV. It was the Catascan Imperium, bloodthirsty slave-mongering scum that have plagued the galaxy for millennia since the dawn of the first suns. They arrived on the outskirts of the system. Eden IV, the so-called New Hawaii, whatever that was, a fleet of thousands of warships of every possible class and make, size and profile, the massive conglomeration of thousands of years of dominating civilizations and stealing their assets for their fleets. They had heard rumors of human strength and dexterity, intelligence, but nothing. Nothing prepared them for what happened. The speech heard around the galaxy blasted across the entire communication network. A grand speech from the fleet admiral as he started his bloviating and posturing, keeping his fleet on standby as he spat his meaningless words to the humans. At its conclusion, humanity as a whole offered the galaxy one simple response. In front of the entire galaxy, in front of the largest fleet of the six empires, in front of everyone, the humans' phase shifted their entire civilization into an alternate dimension and stayed there. Six dozen star systems suddenly became empty ghosts that looked like they were there, but weren't. Every ship, every building, every star, hell, even every asteroid in the local belts, suddenly phased out of reality and into their own alternate dimension of existence, leaving nothing but a slightly transparent ghost of what once was. An entire portion of the galaxy's unexplored regions simply popped out of existence, along with the entire civilization that it contained. The war fleet that remained behind did not transition realities with it and launched an absurdly stupid attempt to do damage. This failed embarrassingly badly as every shot they fired simply flew through each object harmlessly, as if a great civilization from eons past created holograms of massive star systems and forgot to turn them off. The humans acted as if the warship fleet nearby was little more than a mild irritation, and they simply just carried on doing whatever they were doing at the time. The fleet's communication signals were blocked, and the admiral's pitiful childish wailing remained unanswered, his calls going to nobody. Humanity, in one fell swoop, not only secured their future as a species and as an empire, but also rendered unto any enemy the most egregious and vicious insult they could possibly suffer. To be ignored. The rest of the galaxy saw this as a direct challenge. They all launched attacks. All of them ended the same way. Any disruptor technology they attempted was nothing but a waste of time. Any missile launched simply flew by or did not fire at all owing to the fact its intended target could not be found. They even attempted their own phase shift. That also failed. They phased into the wrong universe. Humanity was able to hijack their phase shift systems and phase the ships out of existence completely, leaving the crew floating dead in space. After that, numerous attempts were made. All were simply ignored. Doomsday devices and superweapons became effectively worthless. The greatest powers in the galaxy became little more than laughing stocks because of their inability to put down a minor civilization ten times smaller than their own vassals. Humanity had the smallest ships, the weakest weapons, and the fewest systems. They took down entire empires by simply developing the means to ignore them. All previous conventions of war were rendered useless in the span of about two minutes. The armies they assembled had nowhere to land. The ships they built had nothing to shoot. Empires came into human systems and set up remote outposts to taunt the humans there. The humans simply ignored them, making all efforts as worthless as the people who created them. Humanity took no steps to kick them out or even retaliate. They just ignored them. It has been ten years since the last time anyone has tried to do anything about them. Humanity has since claimed a further sixty systems in their local sector, stopping only when reaching borders. They would warp in with their fleets, phase the entire system out, then carry on as if nothing happened. They were building an entire civilization on our doorstep, right in front of us in their very own pocket dimension and there was sweet bugger all anyone could do about it. Angry words are exchanged when they get close to a border. They block the comms and bugger off or carry on as normal. 
They never encroach on territory and clearly mark their own borders. They do not engage with any traders and do not answer random radio communications. They simply ignore everything around them. But that ends today. Today, I, Thrax T. H. Antar, merchant of the Serenai Imperium, will bridge that gap. I have been observing humans for some time now, trying to understand them. I found a weakness. I traveled for weeks, warping through every system known to us until finally happening upon the original world. New Hawaii, as they called it, is now a bustling tourism hub, the place that started it all. They, as per usual, ignored the entrance of my small frigate, and I carefully maneuvered my ship through the traffic. They could do nothing to me but pass through, but I tried my best to avoid them regardless. I hovered around a station for a bit. It looked like a dry dock of some kind, and I observed it for about an hour, eventually finding what I was looking for a seemingly disused or derelict dock. I maneuvered my ship into it and started praying. I had a pre-recorded message for the humans. Every known radio frequency, every known signal, all broadcasted only locally. I prayed one last time and then started the recording. Hello, humans. I understand that your introduction to the galaxy was not exactly what we would call Erm. Friendly? Yeah, I guess that's an apt enough description. I oom. Um, I would like to be the first member of the galactic community to extend a hand in friendship. Or at the very least, a hand in commerce. My name is Thrax T. H. Rantar, orderly merchant of the Serenai Imperium. I mean no harm of any kind. If I receive no answer within the hour, I shall simply show myself out. If parked in the wrong place, I apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you and Erm. Have a nice day, I guess. This definitely caught their attention, and suddenly every ship within visual range turned to face mine. Unauthorized scan. Unauthorized scan. My ship's AI barked at me loudly as I now had several dozen warships perform scans on my ship. Oh gods, I knew it! I sounded so stupid on that recording. I should have made a proper speech. Oh no, oh no! I yelled at myself for my incompetence. Docking clamps engaged. Pressurization is complete. My AI said again, loudly snapping me out of my daze. What? De-docking clamps? I quickly hurried towards my console and checked things. I had phased out of existence and they had brought me into their universe. More so, I had docked with their station. Before I could do anything further, I heard a polite banging on my airlock door. Hello? Anybody home? See coming? Please hold on, I yelled out and scurried from my seat. I quickly staggered over to the door and equalized pressure between the doors and opened it. Three humans, a large, tall, dark-skinned one, two armor-clad ones behind him, and several pairs of eyes hiding from the other end of the passageway. Oh, H, hello. I was a bit scared, but I blurted out a greeting nonetheless. A blue space elf, the tall dark one said. Son of Abich? The one on the left said, then handed some sort of item begrudgingly to the other one. What? Was. Never mind. Oom, welcome to my shop. Let me show you the merchandise, I stepped back, allowing these oddly adorable creatures through. Their heavy footsteps echoed through the hallway as I showed them to the cargo hold. So what are... Kind of stuff do you have exactly? One of them asked. Oh, I had no idea what to bring exactly. You didn't exactly join the market, so I brought some souvenir stuff. Local crafts, musical instruments, and other things like that. Simple stuff. I have no idea what your dietary requirements are, so I tried to avoid foodstuffs. No weapons, no tech, no state secrets, and what not just... Uh... Tourist why stuff, I guess. I explained as I got to the cargo bay doors and walked inside. The humans followed and allowed me to put the lights on so we could actually see. One of the humans vocalized a sharp whistling noise and broke formation to go look at an instrument nearby. Huh. Looks like a fancy version of a harpsichord. He said, gingerly pressing one of the keys. That is called a soronoki. We usually use it for musical performances or such things. Let me just... Unfold it properly. I approached and carefully unfolded the intricate device, flipping covers and twisting gears until it was open. It looks like a combination of an accordion, piano, and a harp. The tall, dark one spoke idly. Please excuse me, the muse is restless, he suddenly said, and stood in front of it. He tried to make some kind of song, or something. He seemingly pressed some random keys on the instrument, creating a god-awful noise a few times, then attempted a melody. 
I tried to keep my face as straight and salesmanlike as possible, but his childish instrument butchering grated on me. Okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, Bohemian Rhapsody. Still standing, he began the strangest but most entertaining song I had ever heard. Strange stops mid-chord, odd riffs and peculiar notes. He was quickly gaining a hold on the instrument, and by the time the song he was playing was over, he had almost mastered the instrument. He very clearly had experience with similar devices. When he finished some minutes later, the two guards and several humans nearby that had filtered in gave him a round of applause. That sound is damn crisp. That's da shit right there. MMH, haven't had a sound that clean since my days in the theater, he exclaimed happily. She's complicated, though. Bit feisty. Takes some getting used to. I need that thing. What you want for it? I shook my head and smiled in surprise. Ah, uh, I don't know, Oom. Um. I could go for some instruments of yours in trade, or I take gold bullion. Gold is still a decent trade medium these days. I can take that. Probably have to figure something out, but that will do for now, I guess. My nervousness was more than apparent, but they seemed unfazed. One of them spoke up. Ooh, let me see. More instruments. Ooh. He looked around, opening covers and boxes. Ooh, no guitar. Want one? Gitar? What's a gitar? I asked, curious. This, he said, holding up the odd wooden thing he was carrying. He moved it around and held it gently, then began to play a song on it. The sound of that immediately caught my ears. The Cass and I would love that thing. Oh, oh my, that sound, oom. Um. Let me think, oom. Um. Is it okay to ask for, uh, two or three of those in exchange for the Sornoki? I asked politely as I could. Yeah, sure. We have a music shop on the dock. I can go get some stuff you can try out. He smiled with a spark in his eye. I have a better idea. The tall, dark one said, Welcome to New Hawaii Tourist Center. If you will please follow me, I will help you organize your merchant's license. Then we can make a proper deal and figure out a proper trade system. My face lit up with excitement. This, this was more than I was hoping for. Yes, yes, I, I would love that. T.H., thank you. Fantastic. Please follow me, he said, waving everyone away from my ship for now. I followed with a happy step, and all the humans that had wandered in were ushered out of my ship, two guardsmen protecting the entryway for me. We strutted away and headed for something called a trade office. I, however, had one question. Erm, um, may I ask something? Sure. What's up? he replied calmly. After all that has thus far happened... Why are you so? Oom. Um, friendly, I asked as politely as I could. You asked politely? It's not that hard to understand. Up to this point we had angry words, nasty proclamations and warlords using our space to measure their dicks. We were always interested in trade and friendship, hell, even sharing tech. All we ever wanted was to not be alone in the universe, but in a Nuu we had to suffer an entire galaxy made of empire-hungry dickheads. He explained with an annoyed tone. So, to break your animosity, all I had to do was be polite, I asked with genuine confusion. Yep, please, and thank you will get you a lot of places with humans. Make a note of that, he said, closing one eye cheekily. Here you are, the Commerce Guild's trade office. It won't take that long, and I have made sure to secure your ship from prying eyes. I will see to it we have some equally interesting merchandise available for trade and secure some bullion just in case, he said with a smile. Thank you. Looking forward to it, I replied with enthusiasm and walked into the door.